Hey y'all, it's Jess with Roots and Refuge Farm. And welcome back for an unplanned garden tour. Now, I did garden tours all throughout the summer of 2018. Got a beautiful response from all of you. Sorry, a rooster's trying to get in my garden. No, you go on, go. Go back to the yard. Okay. <laughs> And I took a break from these garden tours a couple of weeks ago to switch my garden over from summer to fall. I've been working so hard on it, as hard as my many children and homeschool starting back and all of that will allow. And I have done several videos down in the garden, vlogs where you've gotten little peeks here and there, but I haven't really gone through and just given you a tour. Because in my mind, I was thinking, well, I'm gonna wait until the fall garden is in. But someone made a comment about how they appreciated seeing the mess because I showed in a vlog where there were dead plants laying around and just the transition between summer to fall was just in full swing. Well I came down here this evening and I shot a video talking about the benefits of raised garden beds and I kept seeing stuff that I was like oh that's cool I want to show my friends. And so I decided impromptu we're going to do a between season garden tour and I'm going to tell you right now that my garden is a hot mess. My tomato plants are diseased. My in-ground garden is all but gone to weeds. A lot of this stuff that's planted hasn't sprouted yet. There's trash everywhere. There are buckets everywhere. I don't know where my garden tools are. And a lot of the dead plants laying on the ground haven't made it to the compost or the burn bin. But you know what? We're gonna have a hot mess garden tour because I think that it helps to show people our mess and to show people that this is a real thing, that it is not all pretty, it is not all shiny. And the fact of the matter is, there is some sweaty, rough around the edges works that goes into having a 10,000 square foot garden that is as beautiful and amazing as mine. So come on guys, let's go check it out. All right, here is our beautiful in-ground garden. The squash bugs pretty much took out almost all of my winter squashes. Now I have my baskets down here today to kind of do some final harvesting of some stuff. Some of these are still going. This Gouda winter squash is still coming along, but it's starting to wilt in some places. And frankly, after this many of them wiped out, I stopped being nearly as vigilant on the pest control. And even standing right here, I see a lot of squash bugs on these plants. That rooster is determined to get in this garden. But as you can see, the weeds kind of got crazy over here. At some point, we had, we, we'd been weed eating weekly, but we went on our vacation and you know, things just got a little wild. It's August, we've had a ton of rain and uh, I mean, the weeds are just nuts in between these walkways. So my moon and stars melon is still coming along and I've got one beautiful melon right here. It still looks quite healthy and so, I am looking forward to getting to eat that. One more moon and stars plant down there is doing pretty good. I've had one die out. These tomatoes, are they're still kind of kicking blight has kind of started to set in as well as some septoria leaf spot with those things whenever you start to notice leaves like this you can pull off the lower leaves and extend the amount of harvest you're gonna get from those plants. And actually someone suggested a video by In My Gardener about a spray made of baking soda that you can use. I have no idea, I haven't watched it yet. I just read that comment this morning. So I'm gonna be looking into that, perhaps to use at a later time. I have not done that before. However, if there's something that you could use to deter the onset of blight and that sort of thing, I would love to know it because that's pretty common in my area that by about mid-August, the tomato plants really start getting knocked out and fast. Now you have to keep in mind that these plants I planted from seeds in February. They've been in the ground since April and I have already harvested hundreds of pounds of tomatoes from my garden. So at this point, I'm not completely devastated by the fact that they're dying. I've honestly just kind of gotten used to the fact that the tomato plants go out about this time of year, but I would love to be able to hold that off. As you can see, there are several tomatoes on these plants though, and my other ones have a lot on them. That's one of the things that I'm down here to harvest. We harvested a handful of really good watermelons. Uh, several of them got blossom and rot, which wasn't super surprising to me because this soil is so heavy and clay, it doesn't drain very well. I don't think that 
that the plants really got what they needed as far as calcium absorption with the rain being really heavy and then we had drought period. So I wasn't super surprised that we dealt with those issues with our melons. It was a bummer, but this was my first year to try to grow anything in the ground. And I have been very pleased with the success of it. The fact that we got to do any of those things at all was just a joy to me. Next year will be different. We'll have a different setup. The soil will be more amended. Now, a lot of the melons that do have blossom in rot, they just go to the pig and the chickens. And at this point, there are several little melons there. The plants have just begun drying up because of cucumber beetles and squash bugs just being completely relentless. And to be honest, this last couple of weeks, I've been so focused on getting the fall garden in that I've let these things go. That, my friends, is a weed that's taller than me. So yeah, I named this the Hot Mess Garden Tour for a reason. The glass gem corn is still coming along pretty well as far as I can tell. I got kind of hasty and peeled one of these open and obviously it's nowhere near done, but it's starting to get some color on the kernels. Um, I might've just totally killed that one, but I was curious. So for those of you who are successful and knowledgeable gardeners, I'm sorry if you're like shaking your head at me right now. My sunflowers have been a beautiful success. I have absolutely loved having these in my garden. Now, they are fading quickly, hanging their heads. Of course, I'll leave them up here to dry. The glory days of a sunflower are sadly few. Um, they were majestic and beautiful for a few weeks and they are all starting to really droop now. However, they're still very beautiful and I think that no matter what we end up doing with this in-ground garden space, we'll always put sunflowers on the end. This was just such a happy addition to the garden. These late plantings of okra here are huge and fruitful now picking lots off of these. These are Clemson spineless and they're doing very well. Down here on the end, the beans that I tried here were a runner bean. They completely failed. Of course, I've got my tomatoes torn out there. I have not replanted this yet, but I'm planning on using this trellis for my next planting of tomatoes. We have a long growing season in Arkansas. Our last frost date is not until the end of October. And I actually took some trimmings off of my healthier tomato plants or my tomato plants when they were still healthy and put them in water in the house to sprout roots. And I'll be planting those here for a second round of tomatoes. Hopefully we'll get some off of them. I did that largely experimentally, but I think it'll be really cool if we're able to get some more tomatoes into October. And that is where I'm planning on putting them over here, kind of away from where the rest of my blighty tomatoes are now. I have not replanted that arch yet. I'm leaving all the marigolds that are currently growing. They'll die with the frost, but I'll let them grow until then. These tomatoes right now are still producing some, but they are quickly fading with the spotted leaves, the septoria leaf spot, and it's gotten way up past their bottom branches at this point. So they're probably all going to just get picked and pulled out as well. My late planted zinnias are starting to come up, which is lovely. That's a little zinnia. This bed will be completely weeded out. That basil that's gone to seed, I'll pull out. And on this row, in the next couple weeks as we replant, this tall trellis will get planted with either peas or beans, which are nitrogen fixers, which will help amend the soil from where the tomatoes have been. And this side will also get planted with some sort of bean, or I'll use that for some sort of leafy green or lettuce. Down here, the jalapeno peppers, which had such a hard start, are finally really starting to do well. We're picking a good deal off of these. My giant beans, I never really did much at all. I'm leaving the plant in hopes that as the weather breaks that they'll set some more flowers and I'll at least get enough to save some seed. And the second planting of cucumelons that were just teensy tiny little sprouts out of the ground when I first started my garden tours are now climbing all the way up the arch. I really feel like those cucumelons kind of grew up with my YouTube channel since they were, they were just barely starting when we started our garden tours. So those make me think of you guys. Lots more marigolds here. There are a lot of tomato plants I have already pulled out due to the sickness. This area has already been replanted with some purple trifonto beans and just a couple of different things here throughout. I'm going to deadhead the zinnias and just kind of leave this patch here. 
until the winter really comes in and kills them off because they are such a vital place for the pollinators in the garden. So I'll leave the big zinnia patches at least until some of the other flowering things that I have planted for fall begin coming up and flowering to be able to provide for the pollinators. And here are my sickly tomato rows. Now they are heavy with fruit that is finishing off. Um, you can really tell on some of these, like this is, that is blight um, big time. So that fruit's no good. All of this will go into the burn pile. Some of this that really has been more affected by septoria leaf spot, the fruit is still okay. A lot of this is just going to have to go away. Someone asked me if you can eat fruit that has been affected by plant disease. Like if you can eat the fruit off of sick plants. And the pathogens that cause tomato disease don't affect humans. If the fruit still looks okay and the plant is starting to really get sick and you're picking off all of those last fruits before you pull a plant out, but the fruit still looks okay, those would be okay to eat. However, I would be very cautious in canning them because you wanna be careful to use as perfect food as possible when you're canning. So that would probably be one of those that you would either wanna freeze and then, you know, and cook and use or that you would want to eat right away. Down here most all of my square beds have been pulled out and we have begun to reset them with the exception of these Aros con pollo peppers which are still producing very much. These are wonderful peppers. They have the most fabulous flavor. They're not hot. They're a seasoning pepper. I believe they're Cuban and they are so good. I don't even know how to describe the flavor of these, to be honest. They're not at all spicy. They definitely have a peppery flavor, but nothing like a bell pepper even. Honestly, the main thing I know to say for them is that they taste very much like Cuban food. I'm gonna be picking a lot of these and drying them to make a seasoning, but this is definitely on my suggested grow list, Aras con pollo. I'll put any suggested varieties that I talk about down in the bottom so you can have the spelling. Here in these beds, I've got a couple of zucchinis and squashes, which these will produce before it gets too cold. Now that these are sprouting up, I just actually noticed these today. I'm going to mulch this bed heavily. The lemon balm and mint is still going down here. This is a second planting of noodle beans here on this trellis. We love the noodle beans. For those of you who have asked about that, like what kind of noodle beans, where I have found seeds for those, I was actually given them from a friend, but I think they originally came from Baker Creek and they have some that are called Chinese noodle beans and they have the red and the green there. Another zucchini and another squash over here. Seeing those little guys sprouting up was one of the reasons that I so wanted to bring you guys on a tour of the garden. I have not planted a couple of these trellises yet. Um, over half of them are replanted and some of them I still need to tear off. There's a melon I need to take off and this squash is starting to die back. Very unfortunately I didn't get anything off of it. It was one of the ones I was most excited about. Let's see if I can get some more seeds of that from a friend of mine because they're not available for purchase anywhere that I've found. They're called warded ink and cream puff. Corbachi sweet still going strong. This trellis right here is planted with a pickling cucumber and I see the very first one poking its sweet little head out there. And here are the radishes that I planted with Naraya a couple of uh, videos back. And they're already popping out. I've got some jalapenos here that are doing pretty well. I need to fertilize them. Still getting quite a lot of ancho peppers. I'm going to be putting peas on this trellis, which I'll probably go ahead and plant those here in a couple of days. I've got all of this replanted. I've got some mushrooms that are coming up. We keep pulling those out. Here is more of that septoria leaf spot just kind of making its way through. I just pulled this Dr. Witchy's yellow off. Go ahead and let it ripen up in the house because I want to eat that. What I planted here is really cool. I've never grown it before and I'm really excited to try it. It's called walking stick kale and it is a brassica. Kale is a brassica but it's also called some kind of cabbage. I can't think of it off the top of my head but it grows it can grow really tall on like a main stalk and I'm really excited to try that walking stick kale. We'll see how it does. My chard has grown massive since I thinned everything else out and 
really put a lot of compost down in this bed. Now the only thing is, is the flavor is not much to speak of anymore. Those charred plants have been growing since January and the flavor has just gotten really uh, astringent and strong. The leaves are quite leathery. So that is probably going to just all come out really soon and go to the goats and the chickens. And I'll just replant somewhere in the garden some fresh chard. I have a few different kinds that I want to try. It's much better when the greens are younger. Oh. Hey little boy. What are you doing? Are you riding? All right, well take a seat. Do your riding. I'm going to talk to my friends on YouTube, okay? I can't find a seat. You can't find a seat? Okay, I'll help you. There you go. Sit up in there. All the way? Yeah, sure. Will that do? More tomatoes that are going to need to come out. And uh, this okra is still going strong, producing a ton. That's the hill country okra. These plants are seven to eight feet tall. They are just insane. I haven't replanted around them yet. I planted several sunflowers here in this section. Oh, Ben's cuteness distracted me. Look at all these mushrooms. I told you I was showing you all my mess. Look at all this. Those are tomato plants. We pulled those out from right there like yesterday, I think. These are called pink tip Annie beans. And as you can see, they're starting to get really pink little tips. This is a neat heirloom that I was sent on a seed swap on Instagram. You see the pink coming in? The pink tip Annie's I got on a seed swap on Instagram and the woman who sent them sent them with a piece of paper talking about how they had been handed down for like four or five generations, I think in Virginia, down her husband's side from his grandmother's mother and they called them pink tip Annie's. I think that is incredibly cool. Since I only had about five plants come up and bear anything is to let those dry and save the seeds instead of trying to eat them because I would like to be able to grow enough of them in the future to be able to get a nice harvest. One of the issues I run into having such a big family is that it, with things like beans you really have to grow quite a few plants in order to get enough to really make enough meals. I mean I can beans in quarts because anything less and I would have to open up more than one in order to just have it as a side for our dinner. Now all throughout here on this same trellis that the pink tip ante beans are, these are Kentucky Wonder pole beans that are coming up. Of course it'll take them a little while to grow up and set any pods and by that point I will have already harvested several of the pink tip annies for seed saving so I'm not too worried about those crossing. Everything I've been told is that beans don't readily cross anyway but I figured that even if they were going to that was a safe way to do it because they were planted at such different times. One lone banana melon actually that plant is dying so I went ahead and pulled this off so I can pull this plant down and replant this whole trellis. It is quite a sad day whenever something you were really looking forward to dies and unfortunately that is the way of this warded ink and cream puff squash. You know I took the stance a long time ago that I would be more than happy to put my failures on display if it frees somebody else from some false expectation of what their life is supposed to be like because the fact of the matter is my garden still is beautiful. In its prime this summer, it was breathtaking. And it will be quite impressive again in no time, I'm sure. But the thing is with gardening is it is a seasonal effort. It's not always pretty. Sometimes it looks like death, <laughs> quite literally. That's a season of gardening. The Jing Orange Okra is still doing pretty well but it has slowed down compared to the hill country and the burgundy. However, I'm not sure that I'll grow it again. I love the hill country. It has been my absolute favorite okra. The blueberries and blue gold berries from Wild Boar Farms have been consistently the most healthy cherry tomatoes we've had. A lot of them are already gone and as you can see those plants are all but dead. These will be coming out. Um, I think tomorrow Maya and I will probably come down here and just tear out everything that is dying all the tomato plant but these have just put off so much they were the most healthy the most prolific and it's no secret that i was a big fan of those tomatoes now here's something funny okay do you guys remember my majestic noodle bean trellis that would just hung down with noodle beans and it was so beautiful we picked so many of them look here those are absolutely noodle beans sprouting in the walkway that fell down from this trellis. And we've already planted this with cucumbers. They haven't come up yet, 
but there are so many noodle beans trying to grow in this bed. Honestly, had I realized how many were going to re-sprout, I would have just let them grow here for a second run in the fall instead of planting them back over on that other trellis. But at this point, I've already put some very rare cucumber seeds in the ground, so all the noodle beans are gonna have to go. I've gotta give the cucumbers a chance to grow here. That, however, is hilarious. Here, I've got some flowers planted. Oh no, Kitten George. Great farm cat, wonderful mouser. Absolutely unwelcome in the garden. So here I have planted uh, pink eye peas, which will probably require some staking. Um, I'll probably do like some little teepees here for those to climb. And then on this, I've done some scarlet runner beans. Here my holy basil has just gone awry and I've let it because I absolutely love it. It seeded itself in this pot and it has seeded itself all along the ground everywhere that it overhangs. Which makes me think that I'm probably going to be picking holy basil sprouts out of this bed for eternity. Now let's talk about the Tabasco peppers. Talk about something that has earned its garden space. This is three Tabasco pepper plants. Started from a little quad pack of organic Tabasco starts I got at the local grocery store which they supply their plants from a nursery in Arkansas. And one of them was dead. I paid a dollar for the pack. It was on sale. But when I saw these I thought, oh good, I don't have a lot of hot peppers growing. I'll get these for sauce. I have eaten exactly one of these this year and that was enough to tell me that I did not want to put them in my mouth at all. I made some sauce, which was too hot for me, but my friends Lauren and Brandon, now he is a big hot fan and she is comfortable in the kitchen. So every time they come over to our house, which is weekly, Brandon comes down here with a Walmart sack and picks quarts of peppers. There have been literal gallons of peppers picked off of these three plants, and as you can tell, they are still completely loaded. They've made a sauce which everyone at his work raves about. I'm gonna take their word for it that it's good and not eat it because I do not like really hot stuff. But I will absolutely be growing Tabasco peppers from now on because what a great way to use space. I actually just picked a handful yesterday to put in just a little glass pour bottle with some vinegar because I would like to have a little bit of spicy vinegar to put on greens. However, as far as eating the peppers themselves or eating the sauce, I can't do it. More sick tomatoes and a persistent kitten. The ancho peppers have been quite prolific, which this is what you use to dry to make chili powder. And I have one mystery pepper plant here that the seeds were sold to me as sweet Marconi red, but as far as I know, sweet Marconi reds are a lot smaller pepper. And the other pepper plants that I had labeled as this that came from the same seed packet are a smaller pepper. So maybe if you know something about that, you can shed some light on it for me. However, these, I already took a bite out of this one when I wasn't filming, I just couldn't wait. These are delicious, whatever they are. So I'm gonna save the seeds from some of them plant is still very healthy, has a lot of fruit on it, a lot of flowers. They've got a real thick wall, good flavor, not quite like bell pepper, it's a little sweeter than that, but I really like them. Oh Ben, hold him a little nicer, okay? But you can remove him from the garden. As far as the current garden status goes, a lot is already replanted. Some things are starting to come up, which is very exciting. And a lot is going in over the next couple of weeks. Now I wait until after the middle of August, which is tomorrow, today's the 14th, in order to plant a lot of my things that do better in the cold weather. The things like peas, a lot of the root vegetables like beets, my kales and lettuces. Unless they are a variety that specifically states that they do well in the heat, I like to wait until after the middle of August so that when those things come to a place of, for instance, with the peas when they start flowering, I want them to be doing that after the middle of September when our weather starts to cool down a little bit. You eating basil? Yeah. Is it good? Here are some little Alma paprika peppers. These plants didn't get very large. A lot of my peppers were really stunted, but I've gotten a few off of this. This is a purslane plant where a tiny little bit fell out of this planter and rooted and it's just taken off. And I just let it because it has big pretty orange flowers in the day and it makes me happy. I hope that this helps someone to see an honest look at a real garden where real people grow their own food. Because I'll be honest, when you live your life on social media, it is very tempting sometimes to say things like, hey, we're gonna take 
take a break and we'll be back to look at this whenever it's all glossed over and beautiful again. Because you can, a lot of people do. And wouldn't it be nice to not have to own up to the fact that you have no idea if your corn's gonna produce anything and you tore it open too early and you're the tomato lady and all your plants are dying of disease. And that one plant that you were so looking forward to, you might not get anything off of it. And there were really rare seeds that might have been irreplaceable. Listen, I get it. Sometimes when given the opportunity to look really good at something, the temptation is there to take it. However, the thing is for me, I've never been that person. If my failures being put on display can bring somebody else the encouragement to try, I will drag them out for all the world to see. My garden is a mess right now, but it is a beautiful mess. Even in this state, it is my favorite place I've ever been. So let me encourage you with my reality today. It's not always beautiful, but there is a season to gardening that is called death and it is just as important as the season that is called sowing and the season that is called harvest. Literally, the dying away of things. It's part of the circle and it is tempting to hide from it, to ignore your garden during that season, to become discouraged. But if we will embrace it and we will come down and find the beauty and if we'll show it to others and embrace it as part of the process of this thing that we so love and that we're so called to, I think that that is a key point in moving forward. Because right now, the season where it would be so easy to just hide away from it, now is the time of sowing. It is the time of dying for summer but it's the time of sowing for fall. Now is the opportunity to do the work to have beauty in your garden again. So yes, my purpose here was to encourage you and I hope that that is what I did. If you're one of those people that needs a job well done and perfection in order to be impressed, come back in a few weeks and I'm sure there'll be something going really well then. But as of right now, it's just this reality. And to me, it's just as important of a part of it. You can believe me when I tell you I have spent enough of my life exhausting myself in pursuit of perfection and hiding away the things that were dying. And <laughs> I'm not talking just about gardening. And I've learned in that process that in the end it's just a lot easier to embrace your hot mess garden. Thank you all so much for watching and for joining me on this journey. I bless you and I'm so thankful that you're here. Until next time.